I am Mark from the Endurance Store and in this little video we're going to talk about the seven key things that you need to take into account when you buy a pair of road running shoes. So the first thing is what type of shoe, you know, what do you want to use it for? We'll put the shoes into three categories. The first one is a high mileage shoe, so that's a general kind of shoe that you take out to pound the pavements every single day uh, just to build up a high mileage training for a marathon, those kind of events. The second kind of shoe is at the other end of the spectrum, that's a racing shoe. They're very, very lightweight and they don't have as much cushioning or support as mileage shoes. And they're generally just used for racing 5k, 10k events or for very short speed sessions, very short fast running sessions. And then the third type of shoe, it sits somewhere in the middle, between the mileage shoe and between the racing shoe, and we call that a racer trainer. So once you've decided what kind of shoe you need, the second thing to think about is the cushioning. So mileage shoes have the most cushioning, racer trainers have a little bit less, and racing shoes have the least. So if you're going to run a lot of miles on hard surfaces, then you need to look at the shoes which have got the most cushioning. So most manufacturers produce a mileage shoe and they all have different cushioning systems but they all have high amounts of cushioning. So as an example, this is a Brooks shoe and this is a Brooks mileage shoe and you can see that there's quite a thick amount of cushioning in the heel. If we want to look at real extremes, this is a Hoka and hokers are built purely to provide as much cushioning as possible for runners and you can see the difference there with the Brooks shoe compared to the, uh, the hoker that the hoker has a huge amount of foam built into the heel. So the third thing you need to think about is the responsiveness of the shoe. So the responsiveness is how you react with the ground. So when you hit the ground how do you use that stored energy in the shoe to propel yourself forward? So let's go back to the Hoka. There's a lot of foam in this shoe, and when you're running in Hokas, it really feels like you're running on a mattress. So the cushioning is a very, very high level. But when you're running on mattresses, it's very hard to run quick, because as you push off, the softness of the foam will compress, so it's a little bit like running on sand. It's very soft, but it's also, it also can be a bit harder work as well because you're not pushing off a firm surface. So sometimes shoes which have a lot of cushioning can be less responsive. So certain shoes have certain feels. So this is a Mizuno shoe and this is the high mileage shoe. So there's a lot of cushioning. But a Mizuno has quite a firm feel. The Hoka has a very soft feel. And because it has quite a firm feel, we also class it as being responsive, so it's cushioned at impact, but it feels quite firm as you push off and you don't lose a great deal of energy in that phase. And the stack height doesn't affect performance as much, but the stack height is very much related to the cushioning and the response. So stack height is simply the height from the top of the cushioning to the bottom of cushioning. So that has a big stack height. That's the Hoka shoe, and that has a very large stack height. If we look at the Brooks shoe, the stack height is pretty regular on this. It's less than the Hoka, and I would say the Brooks has a normal stack height. And I don't know whether you can see this from the YouTube clip, but the stack height on the Mizuno, because the midsole is thinner, that's got a lower stack height. So the stack height will impact on the responsiveness and it will also impact upon the cushioning that you get from the shoe as well. Are you a neutral runner or do you over pronate? So just to clarify this, pronation is landing on the outside of the heel and then the foot rolls inwards so you end up with the pressure on the big toe. Now, all runners pronate, it's a natural action, but some people pronate excessively. So if you pronate excessively and it causes you problems and creates certain injuries, then you might want some support in the shoe to try and prevent that pronation. So this Brooks shoe is a support shoe. If I spin it round, on the inside here you can see that the foam is red. 
and on the outside the foam is white. So the white foam is quite soft and I can push my thumb into it. On the inside the foam is red and it's very, very firm. So as your foot tries to collapse in, that red foam won't give because it's quite a strong structure, so it prevents the shoe from rolling in and prevents excessive pronation. So each manufacturer has their own design. So the Mizuno shoe is also a support shoe. And there's a thick wave of plastic which passes through the shoe, and that plastic doesn't give, and it doesn't allow the shoe to collapse inwards excessively. So number six on our list, you need to think about whether the shoe promotes forefoot running or whether it promotes a heel strike. And to do that, we look at the drop in the shoe. So the drop is the difference in thickness between the heel and the forefoot. So if we measured how many millimetres of foam there are in the heel in this shoe and how many millimetres of foam there are in the forefoot, it's the difference between the two. So this shoe has 12 millimetres of difference between the thickness here and the thickness there, so this has a 12 millimetre drop. Now the bigger that figure, the more likely you'll land on your heel, and the smaller that figure, the more likely you'll land on your forefoot. So this is a 12. This is a Brooks we were looking at earlier on. This is also a 12, and that's pretty standard for most mileage shoes. The Hoka, you might be surprised to find out, is a 4mm drop, so that's very forefoot. And I've got another example here, this is a Brooks Pure Flow, and this is also a 4mm shoe. So the final thing to consider is the actual weight of the shoe. So mileage shoes will always weigh more than racing shoes, because the extra cushioning and the extra support adds the extra weight. 300 grams is pretty standard for a, uh, for a mileage shoe. Uh, the support shoe is generally 15 to 20 grams heavier because of the support. Um, uh, mileage shoes of around 250 grams or a little bit less uh, are very lightweight for mileage shoes. Uh, and racing shoes can you get right down to 150 grams and below. I suppose the benefit of having a lighter shoe is that it just feels faster. So if you're trying to run quicker or do speed sessions, Heavy shoes don't really help, uh, but equally lightweight shoes are not great for doing lots of mileage because they lack cushioning and they lack support. So if you're looking to buy yourself a pair of road shoes, why not visit the website, come in store and see us, we'll try all the different options, we'll put you on the treadmill and we'll make sure that you go out of the door with the best pair that suits you.